Welcome Matt, to an experiment in format, a brave new frontier, speed decoding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like speed dating, less romantic, but still a lot of fun. Yeah, and have I got fun for you? <laughs> right. <laughs> You're going to love this, Matt. So, you know your favorite podcast, there's so many, it could be, could, could be Scott Adams, could be J.P. Sears. Jordan Peterson, and always a favorite, but no, this is the folks who started it all, or at least half of them, the Dark Horse trio, duo. Mm. <laughs> the, um, they're a trio if you include Eric, <laughs> but he, he has his own bag. Wonderful. This is good, going back to our roots. When was the last time we talked about these two people? Well, I'm sure they've come up. They come like, up. Actually played, actually played <laughs> clips from them. It's been a while. Okay. All right. So you've been exposing yourself to their latest content? Oh, yeah. So this is the Dark Horse episode 193, The Reactionary Claptrap. It's just full of so much <laughs> nonsense. It's like a, a gold mine of idiocy and, and like anti-vax nonsense. So just just go digging and you you hit a clip it's it just it comes out of the content mine like that so so what's the overarching theme what is it is it is it really still about anti-vax it, it well yes it is but also the main overarching theme is yasha monk from persuasion wrote an article in the atlantic i think uh, maybe mm. new, i don't know one you know one of those high profile left wing outlets and it mentioned that Brett Weinstein was a reactionary and went into detail about him being a 9-11 trooper and an anti-vaxxer, and he didn't like that. So it's it's mostly about that. Yes, I, now you mention it. I saw that uh, exchange between Yasha Monk and Brett Weinstein, and I have to say, I think Yasha Monk totally destroyed him. <laughs> Brett was getting on his high horse. How dare you, sir? Call me a conspiracist, etc. And Yasha Monk, he had the receipts. If only all those were to follow from his example, though it doesn't matter. Like in this in this episode, Brett himself points out examples of him saying exactly what Yasha said. That he said, but he's still framing it as he got it all wrong. So it doesn't, it, like, it doesn't dent. Even when he says, there's two things that he said about me. And then he gets the second one and he's like, and, and yes, the second one, that's right. But <laughs> the, and then we'll <laughs> immediately move on. So, And the second thing is he says that I believe that there should be some sort of Nuremberg trial for people who uh, sought to inoculate children, healthy children, um, with uh, the COVID vaccines. Mm -hmm. Now, on the second count, I'm definitely there. So that's it. It's a it's grievance mongering, Matt. They're just grievance mongering about everything. So that's actually only like a piece of their <laughs> grievance pie. <laughs> <laughs> They've been wronged by so many so often. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm ready. I want to enter the reality distortion field that is Brett and okay. Heather discourse. Well, here's them, you know, they're coming off taking one of their never ending victory laps about being completely vindicated all their claims about the pandemic and how others have seen through the lies and now are realizing you know that they were spot on so here you go dark horse insanity clip one so i didn't do the thing and hey i survived i went through the looking glass and i'm on the other side and i'm still standing and once more i have my health and my integrity intact like that's the thing Right. And it has material implications. The willingness, you know, when the vaccine campaign started, the um, idea of opposing something called a vaccine was so anathema to such a large percentage of the population that it seemed impossible. But saying, actually, let us look at the science here, right? Yeah. Does the science match what we are being told? Oh, no, it's not a match at all. It doesn't tell you what's true, but it does tell you I have a minute, I have a, a license to slow down and think very, very carefully about what's being said because I know that at face value it's just wrong. And then the story becomes 
Yes, yes, yes. We actually, we didn't tell you exactly the whole truth because really the people are stupid. I mean, that's the message, right? The people are stupid. They can't handle the truth. They wouldn't understand the truth. So we had to put this gloss on it. We're like, well, you know what your gloss, your gloss went 180 degrees, what the data actually said to the degree that you were even willing to share your data with us. Right. So your gloss isn't a gloss at the point that it's a lie, a flat out opposite lie. Not only is it a lie, it is a lie that actually has a physical manifestation a hypodermic needle that carries a toxic mixture of substances that we now, I mean, it's incredible what turns out to have been in these things, never mind what was in them that we knew about that was horrifying enough. Mm -hmm. But what actually turned out to be in them was a disaster. So the point is people who woke up early, the earlier you woke up, the less times that hypodermic needle penetrated your skin and injected that stuff into you. People are now, understandably, feeling frightened for how many doses they took and relieved at how many they didn't take. So the point is, it's not an abstraction. It's not an abstraction anymore, is it? (laughs) It's so ominous, so ominous, uh, yet so vague. Uh, but uh, the message is pretty clear, isn't it? My goodness me. So full-blown anti-vaxxery right there. They are through the looking glass, aren't they, Chris? As Heather said at the beginning, they're all the way through. Yeah, and that, you know, the conspirituality guys have talked about how much the fear of your bodily autonomy being penetrated by a needle, right? Uh, by this artificial substance being injected into you is central to the anti-vaccine community and my god they're not subtle about it right and they're you know i remember when people used to say oh how can you say that they're anti-vaccine right they're just asking questions about the scientific data that that lurid tone it's yeah yeah hey chris did i ever tell you that um in 2021 with my phd student we we did a paper on this what we, you were just talking about with the fear of physical contamination having your body pierced mm. by needles and also biological contamination we did a <laughs> one of these infamous priming experiments Sad to say, it didn't pan the out. Didn't work. No re- yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> no result. But Shocking. we had the. But, but we reported that we did not p hack that. Good job. You'd be proud of me, Chris. You and your open science buddies. We are. We are proud of you. We were talking about that, and you know, you heard at the start of that clip as well all the stuff about the people who lied. You know, put a gloss on things, didn't tell you the truth, and you can hear it Matt, that they quite openly talk about you know back before the pandemic people would have been a bit shy about openly seeing such strong anti-vaccine sentiment and now it's it's great like we can all pal around with rfk jr you can actually get lots of followers and attention from the anti-vaccine community so yeah they're just very open about the fact that they have radicalized themselves and and i think they always were anti-vaccine inclined but they would have before been wary about like Mm. endorsing rfk jr or something like that but now yeah nope (laughs) no no not concerned about that reputational hit these days yeah and all of the relatively vague statements that brett was making there like saying that the data that was presented is completely 100 percent opposed to what they were told um, that the the vaccines are full of all of these dangerous, God knows what things. I mean, I'm sure in his mind, those things are true, but it's just an indication of how deep down the anti-vax rabbit hole is gone. Yeah. And okay, so that's that's anti-vaccine stuff. There's there's tons of other things <laughs> yeah. that, that, that yeah. they do, but I'm going to play a clip, which is a slight change of tack. And this one is them talking about Elon Musk, the southern border. You know, I I just want to highlight that all of their kind of content congeals around the standard contrarian right-wing takes, right? Like it's all presented as it's about science and it's about, you know, thinking about things from not questioning the mainstream story. But it's funny that it often lines up exactly with Tucker Carlson, 
like all of the right wing reactionary perspectives. You're supposed to question everything, but somehow they seem to be, you know, getting most things right. So yeah. So th th this is this is walking in the footsteps of the great Jordan Peterson, who could could take some random study about lobsters and it just happens to confirm his, his pre-existing uh, ideological beliefs about how men and women should behave or something. Right. So the, the thing on the right, and it's always been like this, but it's more strong now, is that the left doesn't care about borders, right? In the US, they're practically open. They let everyone in. And Brett and Heller have a little bit of a conspiracy theory about what might be going on there or what might be allowed. So let, let's hear that. I don't know how much people are paying attention to what's going on the southern border, but it is so uh, paradoxical and it reveals the, um, the farce that uh, our system of governance has become to have effectively an unchecked flood of people carrying who knows what across our southern border while we still pretend at other borders and even at the checkpoints on the southern border um, to be a nation in which we are very careful about who and what we allow <clears throat> in. So right. this is some kind of theater. Yes. Have you have you flown in or, or come in overland or by boat uh, to the United States at any point in the last 10, in, anytime since 9-11, really, but even even before that, we pretend to be extraordinarily careful. Yeah, and it just, <clears throat> there's no logical sense to be made of it because the chances that those who have um, ill intent towards us, the chances that they will notice that whatever it is that they wish to bring in or whoever it is that they wish to bring in could be uh, spirited across the southern border and then taken by bus to the interior <coughs> of the country, the chances that they will notice that is 100%. Yes. So um, what are we doing? And... I would just finally say what I do not hear discussed at all in that context is what it says about Trump and his wall, right? I've heard people yeah. mention the wall and say, well, they were tunneling under it with sophisticated technology. I believe that's true. Maybe a wall is insufficient, but it certainly it, seemed... It, it's, it was ineffective is quite different from the hue and cry over it's racist and barbaric. Well, ineffective... You know, I would rather have a wall that somebody has figured out how to go under, where all I have to do is figure out where somebody's invested $100,000 or half a million dollars to go under the wall. That's going to be a lot easier to plug the leaks in that system than one where you literally have uh, no barrier. So, Matt, I, before you I, I try to puzzle that out, I just want to point out, you hear all the coughing and wheezing and gasping? That's because Brett... Uh, is recovering from COVID, and uh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't he, laugh, but yeah. and he mentioned that he, you know, dosed himself with hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin as as you should, right, the, to to treat the COVID. But still, he seems to have some lingering effects. So it's just funny when he's reeling against how we don't know anything about the, what medicine works, and also he mentions that he couldn't keep up. His ivermectin, you know, was 100% prophylactic schedule because you have to take this horrible medicine. I mean, he doesn't put it like that, but he basically says he wasn't able to do it because it was so hard to procure ivermectin. But it's just, you know, all that, Matt, he wasn't taking it and he's got COVID now. So, yeah. Oh, just just mentioning that. But yeah, walk me through that meandering logic. logic on the wall and the immigration um, and the smuggling of substances or people in or both. Yeah, so I think one one implication was that because the southern border is completely open, like it's it's well known that anybody just passed across it with no hassle. You know, people smugglers barely necessary anymore. It's open season. Famously. So the enemies of the United States, who will obviously be aware of this, say they want to smuggle in a chemical bomb or something. They would do it, presumably traveling to Mexico and then crossing the border into the south. And the fact that this vulnerability is there, that's, you know, what's going on. So that's one thing. Yeah, it's very significant. Yeah, there's a nefarious explanation for this. And he's also talking as if Trump built the wall or... Oh, that yeah, that part. So then he got on the Trump 
because like Trump obviously wanted to patch this system, right? You know, he famously built the wall. That was what he was all about. But yes, they seem to be under the mistaken impression that he did build his wall <laughs> and that people were using high tech equipment to tunnel under it, which is it's just it's factually inaccurate about like the success of Trump's wall building efforts. And then also, yes, people were tunneling or climbing over or going round, you know, that's that's what they have to do to get around walls. But generally, the argument is that they're not these effective systems, right, that they're believed yeah. to be. It's it's kind of like the Wiley Coyote school of prevention of illegal immigration. So Brett wants there to be a physical wall because then at least, you know, the chemical bomb carriers need to... Like spend have to spend a hundred yeah because like anyone <laughs> any foreign power that wanted to hurt the united states couldn't put together a hundred thousand dollars to get around the inconvenience of getting under the wall no am i wrong in thinking he was implying that the southern border is deliberately left insecure although it seems to be secure it's so confusing because for a while there he was saying that if you've traveled anywhere since Oh, no, he's talking about the airports. Like that security theater is to give uh, the impression that we are. That, oh, I see. I see. Whereas the, there's a big gaping soft underbelly there on the border with Mexico. And the fact that that is there. And the Democrats want it there. They want it there. For, for, for why? Well, who can, who can say why? But Well, probably hmm. they want to bring in more like foreign immigrants who will then vote democrat and you know like there's there's tons of ways that they could go with it but the subtle thing about you know pivot to trump you know well and on this subject trump you know what to build a wall and they demonized him so you've got that little like just a little cupcake for their audience there who i'm sure there's not that many that are supportive of trump's but lots of people realize he's been unfairly maligned Matt right he clearly had a very coherent policy um when it came to how to secure borders and that kind of thing yeah with a wall that he didn't build yeah it's um it's interesting isn't it like before they were reminding me of Jordan Peterson now they're reminding me of Scott Adams yeah yeah like a lot of the worst gurus are kind of melding into one <laughs> where it's a dark melange of conspiratorial reactionary fantasy yeah yeah well so another figure conspiracy prone that you know has got brett excited and upset at the same time is rfk jr and the fact that he's running that's great you know a good patriotic american with great ideas and and good views on vaccines on the other hand the media establishment is trying to present them as a crazy fringe conspiracy theorist who the right wing likes right why would they do that matt when he's clearly you know the the best candidate for the democrats so here is them talking a little bit about that that contradiction why are they suddenly in support of censorship why are liberals suddenly putting faith ultimate faith in pharmaceutical companies who have always been great villains in the liberal zeitgeist fantastic yes but these questions are going to remain unanswered so kudos tiny bit to uh the harpers for putting that paragraph in here um but isn't it time for all of the people who insist that they are democrats now because they've always been democrats to wake up to the fact that that word no longer means what it used to mean and that uh supporting what is currently leading the democratic party means supporting you know almost entirely the opposite of what you thought you were supporting in times past and it's not that this sort of thing hasn't happened before. Of course, political parties change dramatically, and presumably you most people don't know at the time that it is happening because it's useful for the parties to hold on to the, the voters that they had before. But really, a ceiling corporate power, the military-industrial complex, foreign wars, and censorship, that's what the Democratic Party supposedly stood for, and it stands for none of these things now. So the... <clears throat> The irony here is that this is very simply explained by an obvious hypothesis, which is capture. Yeah. That something has taken control of the Democratic Party. But, Brett. 
Capture sounds like conspiracy. Sure does. Yeah. Um, and apparently- You don't think people were colluding, do you? Uh, it's hard to imagine that people could ever collude. I know. But I've never known if we can take that one leap yeah. and imagine that people may sometimes collude- Which is to say, talking about things that other people don't want them talking about? Is that basically what collusion is? Um, yes, yeah. to- uh, okay to agree to participate in an attempt to accomplish something while cloaking the fact that that is yeah. being attempted. How dare they? Um, yeah. if, if that is even such a thing that I anyone... don't even know if it's possible in humans. Right. I mean, baboons <coughs> maybe, but probably not humans. Chris, was it always this difficult to understand what on earth they're talking about? I don't know, because I have the full context <laughs> of it. So there's a Harper's article, which is talking about RFK Jr., and at the start, there's one paragraph which, you know, lays out his kind of positions, which Hello is giving credit to them for including. But then they move on to talk about, you know, the fact that this newspaper and the Democratic Party are not embracing RFK Jr. and Marianne Williamson wholeheartedly. It just shows that things are... Well, they're captured. They've been captured, mm -hmm. yes. So that's it. I mean, there's not really much else. The, the last bit is just them doing a very... Gad Sadian satire of pantomiming that, oh, we would never, you know, be suspicious about people having sinister motives. Who would dare question the powers that be, right? Like it's 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 subtle. I know it was hard to catch that, but <laughs> yeah, it was there. What I find impressive is how they can still, in a way, kind of present themselves as not politically aligned. Like a little bit like Joe Rogan. Still, I will hear people say, no, he's not He's not a political partisan. He's not a, you know, he's not a reactionary. What are you talking about? He's not even right wing. He smokes pot, for heaven's sake. But then on the Joe Rogan experience, he's talking about the Democratic leadership having people assassinated, you know, really dark stuff as if it's definitely happening. And with Brett and Heather... Clearly, they are politically partisan. They they think the Democratic Party is this evil octopus that is pulling a trick on the American people, has been totally captured, and there's a conspiracy afoot. Is that what you took from that, Matt? Surely that's political so... partisan. Just admit it. You're, you're so cynical. I think that's not at all accurate about what they're up to. They're just, you know, they're, they're just asking legitimate questions. I mean, like, let, let's hear a little bit more. Maybe an analogy will help. All of these things are positions that historically meant something but if something were to be captured and you know i'm getting sick i need a, i need a better analogy than this because this one's getting old but there is a dog it has a nature it's your family dog it's lovely it rolls over and gets its belly scratched one day it gets rabies everything that you think about your dog needs to go out the window that's not your dog anymore it's been commandeered by something that is deadly and what we have is a party. It has not always been a good party. It was a party of racism and Jim Crow, right? Mm -hmm. But it has also historically been a party of working people, a party that advocated for their interests. And that was a natural winner, yeah. right? How could it not be? <coughs> that party has now adopted positions that are absolutely hostile to the well-being of almost all American citizens. Capture is the obvious explanation for it. And the reason that that does not instantly cause people to recoil has to do with habit and nostalgia and uh, loyalty to um, something that existed in the past for which there is no evidence in the president, present. Right. Yep. So the Democratic Party has rabies. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what do you do with dogs that have rabies, by the way, Matt? Can they be rehabilitated with, you know, care and understanding? Mm. Wasn't old Yella something to happen to him? I can't quite, I blocked it out. <laughs> yeah. They, don't, best not to ask Chris. He's, he's off. Uh, off in the he's farm. He's playing, playing yeah. off at the farm, playing with the other dogs. Don't worry about him. So th the conspiracy theorizing they've been doing really has... Got... Hypothesizing. Yes. Conspiracy hypothesizing. Sorry, Matt. Of course. You, you made a mistake there. And so what I do is I use the term 
conspiracy hypothesis. <laughs> yeah, like it's obviously coalesced really strongly around COVID and anti-vax, but it's also found a target with the Democratic Party in the United States. I mean, that's they're really they have strong feelings about it, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Even that part where he's trying to present himself as fair-minded and you know just considering things from different angles, he mentions that. You know, it was a good party. It liked the workers. And then he has to add in, um, and the party of racism and Jim Crow, right? Just to balance it up because he's being too generous to the uh, Democratic Party. Well, right there, Chris, I think he was emphasizing that point that, you know, political parties can change. And they, he's right about yes. that. They did. The Democratic Party changed and therefore it can change again. And that change has happened. That's right. That's the logic there, I guess. And you might be thinking, Matt, maybe, well, that's just Brett. Like, you know, he's got a, he's obviously got a bit more extreme. He's had a lot of controversy swirl around him. Heller wouldn't go that far. It's not an actionable conclusion. It leaves people feeling hopeless. And I, and I do feel like um, I am sensing a greater, ever greater sense, um, again, of hopelessness. You know, there have been... There have been moments and movements in the last three and a half years now in which there was hope. And, you know, I think I think the moment that seemed the highest to me was during the uh, truckers convoy in Canada in early 2022. This would have been um, <coughs> the desire to sweep it all under the rug and to pretend that the people who were who were being duplicitous, cruel, authoritarian, sometimes evil, uh, were not doing that. They were, they, maybe they were misled. Maybe it turns out they were wrong. Maybe not. Um, and they're certainly, you know, they're not going to, they're not going to continue um, following the orders of some of those people now, because now they can see. But um, these are the people we need to trust going forward because, um, because, well, you know, they really know what's good for you and they care about you. I think there are a lot of people now, and I and I and I feel it too, who are just getting, who are losing hope again, who who are who are losing hope in the face of the just endless onslaught of banality, of and of lies, of you know lies cloaked as this is the God's honest truth. Merchants of doubt. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually interesting to hear them both speak after quite some time for me to see where they're at sort of psychologically they're speaking relatively authentically here don't you think chris and this is the way that a lot of people who go really far down the conspiracy rabbit hole feel um mm -hmm. you remember i told you about this unfortunate lady who became obsessed by chemtrails family and friends didn't believe her this sort of supporting worldview to explain this inexplicable terrible fact that the government was allowing chemicals to be sprayed into the air and to poison everyone. It's causing the trees down the road to die. You know, it created this extremely dark and oppressive worldview. And so I kind of believe Heather when she's saying that it feels hopeless and that, because that is where a lot of conspiracy theorists end up. It's, it's a sad place to be. If this was a normal episode, I would have the clips uh, where she talks about like people asking for advice, just people that she knows, acquaintances asking for her to offer her opinion about advice they've received about, you know, vaccinating kids or this kind of health letter that they're getting from a, some medical source. And Heller absolutely reading it and discovering you know how full of lies it was and how dangerous and she told her friend and her friend was so thankful you know for her and it, it's just like diary of an extremist in a way like because what they are talking about were you know they say they're just there to help you they want to take care of you yeah but that's what they say brett and heller are presenting them that they are the good people, the freedom fighters, the ones who are the only real patriotic people left standing with all the other good people. And the government isn't that much, like it does make use of messages in public health to try and, you know, get you to think about other people or whatever. But it isn't this just constant barrage of, no, we really care, we love you, right? It's much more matter of fact about you know this will reduce your risk and this will do that so they lean into the 
parasocial aspect all the time, but they have to present it as it's the government and the media yeah. that are always trying to manipulate you. But we would never do that because we mm. care and we're just, you know, good scientists who have to speak the truth. It's, it's, it's so it, duplicitous. It's, no, I know what you mean. It's that paranoid way of thinking, you know, this government, which pretends to be acting in our best interests and pretends to be spending our tax dollars on worthwhile things or pretends to have the national interest at heart. Really, no. Really, what it wants to do is to is to make you sick, to fleece you dry and give all your money to the medical companies, to let a flood of illegal immigrants uh, in with God knows what on them. It's just this very dark, paranoid kind of style, which is to, that sort of whispering in your ear, which is, you know, these people say that they care about you, but don't believe them. They want to hurt you. Um, it's it's really it's really quite dark and more than a little sad. Yeah. It scrapes my bones is the way that I, I put it before. And I, I think it applies here. So I've got two more, Matt, two more just short clips to, to okay. finish off. Okay. I think I'm building up a gestalt from the, <laughs> yeah. the ones I've got so there's, far. There's so much that I haven't covered that they say. So much insanity. This is really just scratching the surface. So like I said, Yasha Monk highlighted, you know, the breadth called for doctors who recommended vaccines to children to face like Nuremberg trials, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Is all the people in the movement have implied that they should be hung um, as well as the researchers who suggested that the origins of COVID are not from a lab, right? So there's a common mm -hmm. motif that you find in that neck of the woods, the conspiracy lane, but Anyway, you're going to hear the context of like Nuremberg trials and that uh, kind of come up. And that's why he's talking about this point. And his son interjects to ask a, about a clarification. This is also around then the 9-11 stuff because, you know, it's all mixed in together. Okay. They're not really the sharpest tools in the shed. So, uh, you know, they fall into something, the reactionary trap, yeah. right? Where they think it's actually some sort of violation of the Nuremberg Code to inject children with mRNA vaccines. For a disease that they're not susceptible to. Yeah. And you know what else they believe? 9-11 was an inside job. I can prove it. Here, he says the physics of Building 7 falling down wasn't uh, a match for what was seen. Okay. Thanks, Yasha. That's, uh, that's, that's good logic. I think you should really quickly clarify, because it's clear to me exactly what you're saying, but I don't think everyone will get <coughs> your difference between the terms inside job and, for example, cover up, or I, I, or I don't know what happened, but okay. it doesn't yeah. seem like it yeah, matters. That, that's fair. Um, my point is, there are lots of things about the story that we were presented by the 9-11 Commission that do not appear to add up. I do not know what that means, right? I certainly take Michael Shermer's, uh, what I believe is a good faith response to this, uh, much more seriously than Yasha Monk's uh, cynical one. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, I don't know why Building 7 falls down the way it does, but I do know that if the idea is that there was a fire that burned all day in Building 7, which apparently there was, and it somehow weakened the structure enough to bring it down, in fact, I said to Michael Shermer, let's just grant that there was something stored in there that uh, caused it to be fatally compromised by fire. It doesn't fall down straight like that. Something gives first. It leans over. It twists. Some part of it collapses. Some other part of it remains standing. Now, is it possible that there is an explanation which does simply connect office fires to that collapse? Maybe. I'm open to that. But... What I'm not open to is pretending that the physics that we all learned in high school and college is a match for fire bringing down a building in that way. I don't know what I'm looking at. What I'm looking at is an anomaly that is worth exploring. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, <clears throat> I believe that's, that's what I have to say. Um, I just want people to pay attention to the tactical nature of these attacks. Well... Okay, so Brett bringing his evolutionary biology training to bear. Uh, he he knows how a building ought to collapse after being on fire for several days, and it shouldn't have collapsed like that. Wow! So he is he is like a, a nine eleven truther type person as well. Oh yeah, he's 
he even there is downplaying it somewhat because he has a whole list of anomalies like they do with the telephone calls and they are all the standard 9-11 trooper list right but somehow when brett does it it's just you know it's it's because he says it's a hypothesis (laughs) conspiracy hypothesis i felt he's channeling eric here yeah, yeah, directly. Especially those phrases like, now that's an anomaly, and I don't know what it means. But Yeah, I don't know what I'm yeah, seeing. I don't know that's, what I'm seeing here, yeah. But something doesn't add up. That's all I'm saying. That's one of Eric's speciality, like his favorite uh, technique to say, no, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying things don't add up. And I always think in these cases, like, if you broke down their statements, right, Brett saying, I'm not saying the building could not collapse in the way that it does. I'm just saying we know that it doesn't collapse that way from high school physics, which I took high school physics. I have absolutely (laughs) no idea why buildings are You you didn't cover that in grade 11? Like, you know, how buildings collapse after being on fire for several days, what does that concrete or, you know, steel or whatever? No, but Brett knows. He went, must have gone to a better high school. But just that wounded bird pose of they are completely misrepresenting my oh, argument, my argument how, is... How dare they? Mm, it's much more sophisticated than, than they allow. Notice the tactical way that they misrepresent me. But if you actually break down what he says, or you take it like Yasha Monk did and, you know, highlight things that he said on his podcast, things that he's tweeted, it yeah. absolutely shows that he is a 9-11 trooper. He's just one that doesn't come right out and directly say, and most of them don't. Most of them do say, I'm not saying that I know exactly what happened. I just know that the government story has all these holes. Like that's, they act like no other conspiracy theorist would adopt that pose, you know, would be so rational. And that's literally what all but the most extreme ones do. So, Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's true. Like there is a small segment of the ones that have gone full wing nut and have, haven't left their basement for, for years, who who are talking about reptilian overlords. and But yeah, you're right. I mean, same with anti-vaxxers, right? There is very few anti-vaxxers out there who just come out and say, although Brett and Heather are coming pretty close to that point. <laughs> but, but the standard operating procedure is to say, I'm pro-vaccines. Vaccines can be very good, but this thimerosal that's in this MMR vaccine or whatever is deeply troubling to me and that's the problem so but then of course they've got a long list of these spurious things they bring up exactly like brett is doing there i know brett has brought up thimerosal on this podcast before has he now has of course he he has has. yeah (laughs) yeah he has is there any trope any conspiratorial or anti-vax trope he hasn't brought up we should probably start there but the the interesting thing was you know he brought this up it was it was a very short segment he was basically implying that you know people have claim that it isn't a problem but actually there's trace amount whatever right but but the point to me was when you hear something like that if you've spent any time around conspiracy communities or anti-vaccine communities you know that concerns about thimerosal are a trope a huge trope and one that actually led to them being removed they weren't harmful but they weren't helpful. That's an- right. Just, just to make the silly thing go away. It's like, okay, we'll use a different, a, a different, um, uh, it's a, it's a preservative agent, isn't it? Yeah. And people used to claim if they did that, that they would see this big drop in the, you know, autism rates or all those kind of things. And it didn't happen, but it doesn't matter. Our Junior, <laughs> on to the no, next like, point. I, I, yeah. The thing that the thing that blows my mind, and I'm just I'm actually genuinely curious about this. Have you encountered have you come across an answer to this in your listening, Chris, which is the large majority of the world has been vaccinated. Not everybody. So there's a fair few in the in the control group. So we have probably billions in these two groups. And we, we have we have statistics on all cause mortality, we have statistics on all kinds of fatalities and illness and so on. And they show incontrovertibly that be, being vaccinated is good for your health. It is totally at odds with everything that Brett's saying. I'm just curious how he squares that circle. Well, he just, I, I mean, I, unfortunately, I don't have the clips for it, but he, he talks about how you're basically able to reject studies or figures produced by bodies that you know to be corrupt. Wow. 
even if that doesn't apply and give him the out that he needs, there's a whole industry, right, who claim that actually it's uh, all the taking the vaccines, which caused like whatever kind of deaths are attributed to, to COVID. And even then, he has in his back pocket his super powered one, which is it's basically reduced your total life expectancy. So when you're 70, say you would have lived to be 80, but now you've got 10 years like of uh, early damage. So he won't be vindicated until, uh, you know, people stop dropping off in their old age. And there's, why is everybody dying five years earlier than before? We need, Brett was right. So he's got like a whole <laughs> clown car of, <laughs> of clown arguments to trot out honking their horns if um if he needs to okay all right so just like a bog standard conspiracist then yep yeah okay well Thanks. did you enjoy that Matt? that was just a taste it's literally a taste <laughs> it's, it's about two hours that's more enough stuff. that's enough <laughs> that's enough no more tasting yeah. wow no. that's um no that was something actually my reaction to that chris surprises myself a little bit which is that um like I knew I'd be annoyed, I'd feel frustrated, I'd feel irritated, mm. upset, all, all of those things. But I didn't expect to feel sorry for them, <laughs> which I shouldn't. I shouldn't. But Brett is currently sick in both body and mind. Yeah. And those two things are connected as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're not pretending. They're oh, no, they're no. Tr- they're, they're true believers. They absolutely believe. This is this yeah. is one of the things that people always get caught up on saying. But you, so you you think they're just lying to everyone and like they might knowingly misrepresent studies. But even then, I think their cognitive defenses for them being correct are so strong that it doesn't even matter how how wrong they're proven yeah. by the evidence. They'll find a way to escape it. I, I don't know. I'm like a broken record here, Chris, but but that's why narcissism is the secret magical key that resolves that dilemma of, oh, are they lying or are they in good faith in scare quotes? Like when you have that utter and total belief in yourself, then, you know, all becomes possible. If you downplay something or do a certain maneuver, it's because you can see further and you know what's really going on. And it's, it's, it's a white lie in serve of a just cause. So, yeah. That's it, Matt. Well, fun, fun, fun. We'll leave the guru grindstone there for today. It can sharpen its tools tomorrow. Yeah. So I'm out of analogies. <laughs> I've done the climb car. The fuel is out. <laughs> the, the, they're honky by the, the road, eating their sandwiches. So we'll leave the metaphorical climbs and the literal climbs of the dark horse to their <laughs> the dark arts. The dark arts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks for that, Chris. Um, sad to see where they are. Hope they get well soon. Is that a good sentiment to leave it on? Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Well, thanks for that, Chris. Bye-bye. Ciao.